Last example of section 2.1. We're given two functions, f, which is equal to 1 over x minus 2, and g, which is x over x plus 4. We want to find the following, the sum, difference, product, quotient, and then we want to determine the domain in each case. Once we find the domain for the sum, it'll be the domain for the difference and the product right away from our discussion up here. So again, f plus g of x, our definition says you find f of x, then you find g of x, and you just add whatever you get here. So substituting 1 over x plus 2 in for f, and substituting in x over x plus 4 for g, we just add those together. Now we have two fractions that we need to add together, which means we need to find a common denominator. Easiest way to find a common denominator is to just take the denominator of one, multiply it by the denominator of the other, and you are done. That's going to be your common denominator. But since we need to keep equality with everything that we write, we have to multiply top and bottom in an appropriate way. So we want to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing because that is the same thing as multiplying by 1. So for over here, we need an x plus 4 in the denominator. And since we don't want to change the equation or the expression, we need to multiply by x plus 4 on top as well. All right, if you were to do x plus 4, cancel out with x plus 4, you get 1 over x minus 2. So nothing changed there. And likewise, we have x. And then we need to get an x minus 2 in the denominator. And if we cancel out the x minus 2s, we're left with x over x plus 4, which is exactly what we had to the right of the addition sign. Since these two fractions now have the same denominator, we can add right across the top. So we have x plus 4 plus, and if you're okay with it, I'm going to distribute this x into that term. We have x squared minus 2x. It's all over. And one bit of advice, unless I sp specify it otherwise, keep this factored in the denominator. Since we're asked to find the domain, we're going to have to factor the denominator anyways. This is already in factored form. We can read off the domain really quick if we just leave it like that, if we don't combine and foil it. We just want to simplify the numerator at this point. Combine like terms, you have x squared, you have x minus 2x, which gives us minus x plus 4 all over, then x minus 2, x plus 4, and we're done. That's as simplified as you have to take it. And so we need to find the domain. Right. We have to get rid of 2, and we also have to get rid of negative 4. So whichever way you like to write it, either in interval or set builder notation, that's fine with me. We can see it this way. So we have to get rid of negative 4. We have to get rid of positive 2. And there we go. Let's go off to the side and talk about how that is the intersection of the two domains. The domain of f is everything except for positive 2. So if we draw a number line, we have to get rid of positive 2. So that open circle right here just means get rid of that negative 2. Everything else stays. Domain of g is everything except for negative 4, which should be down here. I apologize about that. Negative 4. Bam. All right, so this is for f. That is for g. And what we're going to do is imagine if we just smash these two uh, number lines, one on top of each other, and if it has a hole, you have to keep the hole. If it doesn't have a hole, they just kind of glue on top of each other. So first hole we approach is negative four. Second one is positive two. 
everything else we keep which is exactly the domain for f plus g right here. There's a hole at negative four, there's a hole at two, we're good to go. Let's do the subtraction or the difference. f of x minus g of x. So we're going to do the substitution first. We already talked about the common denominators that we have to get, so we're going to have x plus 4 over here. And then we're going to have x times x minus 2 over here. And we have x, minus, uh, x plus 4, x minus 2, and the only difference between part 1 and part 2 is there's a minus in between now. Since we have common denominators, we can just combine across the numerator. We have x plus 4. Now we have negative x times x, which gives us negative x squared. Then we have negative x times negative 2, which gives us plus 2x. Just be careful with your negatives if there's multiple negatives floating around. All right, combine like terms. We have negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. We have x minus 2, x plus 4, and we're good to go. The domain of, for part 2 is the same as the, the domain for part 1. We don't have to worry about that. Now we want to do f times g. That's Point-wise defined, say of f of x times g of x, which substituting in, we have 1 over x minus 2 times x over x plus 4. Since you're multiplying two fractions, you don't need common denominators. You can just go right across the top, right across the bottom. So we get x over x minus 2, x plus 4. And that's the product. Domain of the product is the same thing as the domain of the sum and the difference. So you have to get rid of the 2, have to get rid of the negative 4, everything else is good. Lastly, we have the quotient. So we have f of x over g of x, which gives us a compound fraction. What I like to do, since we have a fraction over a fraction, to indicate the fact that we have one fraction on top and one fraction on bottom, I like to draw the middle bar slightly longer than the other two, just so I don't get confused on the way things stack. Now, since we're dividing fractions, we have to recall how to do that. Whatever um, mnemonic you have for that works for me. The one I like is to write it this way. Then you can either skip, flip, multiply, keep, change, change, or if you like it the other way, you can multiply by the reciprocal. They're all the same exact thing. It's just whichever way you learned it. As long as it's working out numbers-wise, I'm happy. Whatever helps. All right, so I'm going to skip this one, flip this one, and then change that division into a multiplication. And since we're going to be doing a lot of algebra, it's important that we write our multiplications as a filled-in dot here, not as an x. Um, and we're going to use an open circle for a different way to put functions together. So having a filled-in dot will be important just to keep track of everything. Now we have multiplication of two fractions. Go right across the top and right across the bottom. Now... With the quotient, we take the domain of f, domain of g, and then we have to get rid of even more. So first and foremost, we have to get rid of the negative 4. Get rid of that negative 4. We have to get rid of the positive 2. Right, because those are coming from f and g. That's where we start. And then we also have to get rid of anything that causes g 
to equal zero. And so since g is defined as a fraction, we need to figure out where the numerator is equal to zero. Since this one isn't too bad, it's just when x is equal to zero, we have to get rid of that as well. So that's going to be the answer in set builder notation. In interval notation, you have negative infinity to negative four. Get rid of that with the open parentheses. Glue together everything to the right of negative four. That's in between negative four and zero. Get rid of zero, then get rid of two, and then two to infinity. So in this example, you can start to see how set builder notation gets to be really efficient when you have to remove, you know, a couple different numbers. So if you think back to your high school trigonometry class and the domain of, say, tangent, where you're getting rid of infinitely many things, it is almost impossible to write it in interval notation. It's much quicker and more efficient to write it in set builder. So we're going to interchange between the two. If you have questions, please feel free to email me, ask me in class. Um, we'll have plenty of opportunities to play around with these two different concepts, but it'll be good to be able to switch between the two and get comfortable with both of those.